All right, guys, we're going to try another experiment. This one is going to be our cloud in the bottle experiment, which is really, really fun. It's going to help teach us about how clouds form. Then we're gonna do a, another version of it where we get to see how clouds form better. Okay, so to start out, what I have here is a bottle. Now this bottle, um, I also have a bike pump and the lid is attached to the bike pump so that I can increase the pressure inside the bottle. That will be very, very important for us. Now typically when clouds form, what do they form with? Water, right? So we need to start off with just a little bit of water. So I'm going to put a little bit of water here in this bottle and we're going to put it in, we're going to move it around and see if we can get the water to get into um, all the little cracks and the crevices and the dents and indents to try and put as much of that water moisture here in the bottle as we can. Now we don't want tons and tons of water moisture because that will mess it up a little bit. So. We're going to get rid of some of the excess. All right, now we have this one with all of those tiny little water molecules in it like you would find in our atmosphere. Now there's one key ingredient that's missing right now. That's what's called a condensation nuclei. Now out in nature when clouds form, this condensation nuclei can be a few different things. It could be smoke, it could be pollution, it could be sand or dust or just any little particle that's in the air. Now that condensation nuclei, what it does is it provides a surface for those water molecules, those water, the water vapor to condense onto. So it's kind of the starting point and all the tiny little pieces of water condense onto it and then they form a raindrop which then forms a cloud. So for ours today, what we're going to use is a condensation nuclei. I have a couple of toothpicks here. I'm going to light them on fire, I'm going to blow them out, and then we're gonna put some of that smoke here in our bottle to give us our condensation nuclei. All right, let's give it a shot. We're gonna get it on fire. And as I blow it out, you can see that smoke. So as I put it in here, we're gonna let that smoke fill our jar so that we get these tiny little particles of carbon in the jar, which will act as that condensation nuclei. Now we're gonna put these in the water so that they don't set anything on fire, safety first. And we're, we are going to screw this bottle onto our cap, and I am going to start putting in pressure. Now this part takes a little while, I'm sorry. We're gonna try and get it so that the pressure is about 15 pounds per every square inch of the bottle. Here we go. go you should see the formation of a cloud. Are you ready? Here we go. All right there do you see it? I'll walk a little closer to the camera. So hopefully you get a look into the bottle and you can see that it's cloudy in there. You might see a little bit of that moisture coming out. Now what's interesting is as I put that pressure into the bottle I was putting more and more and more molecules into this space. And it's a confined space so the pressure was increasing. That forced those molecules closer and closer and closer together. And then when we release it with that rapid expansion, we get a change of state. And those molecules condense around that condensation nuclei. They become more liquid than gaseous and we get our cloud. Now, this is how it happens in nature, which is really, really cool. I'm gonna get rid of the extra water in there. Now, because of our knowledge of science, and of different materials and substances, we can do this a little bit better. Now water, if I were to take this and just put it in my hand, does anything happen to the water? Not really, right? There is a little bit of heat transferred from my hand, which is warmer, into the cold water, but not enough to really change the water or to change um, what it does. Now, if we use a different substance, like for example, 
inside of this bottle is ethyl alcohol. This has different physical properties and its boiling point is much lower than water's, where my hand couldn't do anything to the water. If I were to put this in my hand, you'll see that it will expand and it'll travel up into this top area and then it will begin to boil. And that's part of this physical property of boiling point. So as I hold it in my hand, you can see it start to go up. And as it gets to the top, it's going to continue to fill it. Right now, my heat, the heat from my hand is expanding in the alcohol and there it is, it starts to boil. It has enough heat just from my hand to begin that change of state. Now, we're not gonna use ethyl alcohol in our experiment, but we are going to use rubbing alcohol, which has some similar properties. So what I'm going to do is just like before, we're gonna use our bottle, and I'm gonna put a little bit of our rubbing alcohol inside it. And now, we want it to start coating the inside, just like we did before with the water. I'm gonna put a little bit more in so that we get a good cloud. All right, so as we begin to coat all the, the crevices, like we were saying before, and all of the indents, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to pressurize this to about 15, um, 15 pounds per square inch, just like we did before. As we let go this time, we should have a different reaction. Because the boiling point is different, um, because the properties of the rubbing alcohol are a little bit different than the water, we should get more of a reaction. Let's try it. here on the video you can see that the entire bottle is filled with a cloud now and you can see some of that coming out same principle but because of the different physical properties um, we get a different outcome hope you guys like this one this is an experiment that I really enjoy doing and I wish you guys were here in the classroom to do it with me but at least we can do it this way <laughs>